It's two o'clock. Good afternoon, everyone. This is the Thursday, March 25th, 2021 afternoon session of the Portland City Council. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. Keelan, please call the roll. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. Rubio. Here. Ryan. Here. Hardesty. Here. Maps. Here. Wheeler. Here. Under Portland City Code and State Law, the Portland City Council is holding this meeting electronically. All members of the council are attending remotely via teleconference. The city has made several avenues available for the public to listen to the audio broadcast of this meeting. The meeting is available to the public on the city's YouTube channel, eGovPDX, www.portlandoregon.gov slash video and channel 30. The public can always provide written testimony to the council by emailing the council clerk at cctestimony at portlandoregon.gov. The council is taking these steps as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic and the need to limit in-person contact and to promote physical distancing. The pandemic is an emergency that threatens the public health, safety, and welfare, which requires us to meet remotely by electronic communications. Thank you all for your continued patience, flexibility, and understanding as we work through these challenges to conduct the city's business. And now we'll hear from legal counsel on the rules of order and decorum. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mayor and Commissioners and guests. To participate in council meetings, you may sign up in advance with the council clerk's office for communications to briefly speak about any subject. You may also sign up for public testimony and resolutions or the first readings of ordinances. The published council agenda at portlandoregon.gov forward slash auditor contains information about how and when you may sign up for testimony while the city council is holding electronic meetings. Your testimony should address the matter being considered at the time. When testifying, please state your name for the record. Your address is not necessary. Please disclose if you're a lobbyist. If you are representing an organization, please identify it. The presiding officer determines the length of testimony. Individuals generally have three minutes to testify unless otherwise stated. When time is up, the presiding officer will ask you to conclude. Disruptive conduct such as shouting, refusing to conclude your testimony when your time is up, or interrupting others' testimony or council deliberations will not be allowed. If there are disruptions, a warning will be given that further disruption will result in the person being placed on hold or ejected from the remainder of the electronic meeting. Please be aware that all council meetings are recorded. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, we don't really have public testimony this afternoon. We have invited testimony. We're hearing on one matter this afternoon. It is exciting. It's our sister city annual report, item 185. Keelan, if you could go ahead and read that for us. Accept the 2020-21 annual report on sister city activities. Colleagues, today we have the opportunity to hear from Portland's sister city associations as, as part of their annual required report to the Portland City Council. Because they were unable to share their 2020 report last year, this presentation will encompass program activities that took place during both the 2019 and the 2020 calendar years. For those who don't know, Portland has nine sister cities that it shares in with the volunteering forging of ties to encourage cultural understanding, friendship, and exchange, as well as more practical applications like trade agreements and business partnerships. Our sister city associations are led by dedicated volunteers who not only build bridges across the globe, but represent and uplift our communities right here in Portland. Through this presentation, the council and the public have an opportunity to learn a lot more about the work that our sister cities do and the associations here in Portland that work so diligently to make these relationships productive. So I'd like to now start by handing this over to Cheeto Dilaweo, our International Relations Director in the Office of Government Relations, and she'll kick us off today and introduce our sister city associations. Cheeto, good afternoon and welcome. Good afternoon, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioners. Can y'all hear me all right? Yes. 
Perfect. Well, my name is Chidong Hiwayo, and I serve as the International Relations Director in the Office of Government Relations. As part of my work, I support Portland's sister cities, a, community, a committed group of community leaders and volunteers who work together to put on an incredible variety of activities and events that support our engagement with the local international community. Before inviting my colleagues to speak, I would like to provide some background on our Sister Cities program and the work of the International Relations Program. As you're all aware, the International Relations Program is housed within the Office of Government Relations. We help to elevate Portland's international reputation, promote the city's policies, and help to make Portland a welcoming international city. I do not exist in a vacuum. Portland's local international community is tight-knit and we work in partnership with local international facing partners and stakeholders. We facilitate a dialogue around policy issues and city plans that explored models, systems, and approaches to addressing the challenges that cities across the globe face while sharing Portland's values and lessons learned. And while we resorted to doing this virtually, it's my hope that there is a future, hopefully soon, where we'll be able to re-engage this level and find opportunities that align with the city and allow us to share best practices and information on innovative ideas and pressing issues, as well as build bridges and mutual understanding in the process, something we especially need in these divisive and divided times. Now, typically, this report would have taken place in the month of June during the height of Rose Festival season, where minutes after our annual Sister Cities reception held at the atrium of City Hall we head up in the council chambers accompanied by visiting dignitaries to welcome them and highlight milestones and exchanges. This reception has been an opportunity to recognize our sister cities, bring together local and regional partners, have visiting government officials and delegates meet with our elected officials and city bureau subject matter experts. Through all this, I've had the privilege of experiencing and belonging to a community and work with individuals who have decades of experience. Our sister cities play an integral part in our city's cultural fabric and have an economic impact. They have deep roots within our communities and contribute to uplifting the lives of Portlanders. They are members of Sister Cities International, a nonprofit organization that was initiated by the Eisenhower administration in 1956 to foster mutual friendship and understanding. Now true to the spirit of Sister Cities International, Portland's nine sister cities enhance ties for the Portland metropolitan area by facilitating cultural, educational, and economic exchanges between our local community and communities abroad. We're just over a year into the pandemic and our sister city associations have felt the impact. This group, despite the challenges they face, has shown resiliency and has truly been encouraging. Folks are adapting and some of our associations have even helped with PPE donations in response to COVID-19. Now today, the leadership of Portland Sister City Associations is pleased to present their annual required report on their efforts and activities undertaken the 2019 and 2020 calendar year. Thank you for taking the time to listen and accept this report. Without further ado, first up, I'd like to introduce the first speaker, James Autry, co-chair of the Portland Sister Cities Coalition and president of the Portland Ashkelon Sister City Association to present and provide his update. Thank you. Thank you, Cheeto, and thank you, Council. Appreciate you allow, again allowing us to share all the good things that are happening throughout our Sister Cities program. I, I got involved about 10 years ago and had the privilege of not only volunteering as a president of the Portland Ashkin Israel uh, Sister City Association. I've been to Israel three times. Uh, my last trip was in 2010 and haven't made to Ashkelon yet, but that's on the, the bucket list. So I will be uh, planning a trip in the next couple of years uh, to do that as that begins to open up. Uh, the particular association with Ashkelon Israel is a, a city in the southern part, just south of Tel Aviv, the north of Gaza. And we've been around in, in partnership for 34 years. And we do have uh, the world's largest water desalination plant, Israeli beer breweries, and very creative young entrepreneurs. It's an ancient 5,000 year old Philistine city there on the Mediterranean and was chosen as a Rockefeller Foundation 100 resilient cities uh, several years ago. The current mayor is Tomer, Tomer Glum, and he is there in the area 
this particular city of Ashkelon is in the Ashkelon district, and that's where they call it Israel Silicon Forest. Inventors of the Pentium 4 chip, many different aspects of our modern technology has come out of, of that southern part. As an association, we've identified three ways that we're beginning to work with businesses, both in Portland and in Israel, in the realm of strategic technologies like medical breakthroughs, electronic breakthroughs, and environmental breakthroughs, and then working on pairing up these associations and organizations. Uh, particularly for us, we've been working on helping the, all the sister cities uh, raise up and engage. Uh, this past couple of years, we put together a Facebook page, a web, website page, and then I've had the honor and privilege of hosting uh, in re the reception each year and organizing that as well as the Grand Floral Parade. So here's our Facebook uh, website and then the information about the reception, which is always a highlight. We're really disappointed that we couldn't do that last year and, and just looking forward to the next time when we could all gather together and have special guests as well as uh, reaffirm our proclamation of working together. And these are the different uh, pedicab entries that we have in the Grand Floral Parade each year. And that's my report for Ashkelon. Uh, thank you. I'm Philip Patestio with the Portland Bologna Sister City Association. Uh, it's my pleasure to speak with you, Mayor Wheeler and distinguished members of the council. Bologna, a city of around 500,000 people, is the capital of the region of Emilia-Romagna, located in north central Italy. It is a city with many claims to fame, particularly what is believed to be the world's first university uh, established in 1088. And its world-renowned cuisine recently on display in Stanley Tucci's Searching for Italy series on CNN. Its nicknames are La Dota, the Learned, La Grassa, the Fat, mostly because they use a lot of butter rather than olive oil. Uh, and its third nickname is La Rosa, which is the Red. Uh, that is usually attributed to its history as a communist stronghold, but also may have arisen from the city's architectural penchant for uh, red roofs. Bologna and Portland have been sister cities since 2004. We are fortunate in a way to have been able to celebrate our 15th anniversary pre-COVID, and in September of 2019, Portland received its first ever visit from Bologna's mayor in the person of Virginio Marola. His arrival kicked off a week-long seri uh, week series of events from Royal Rosarian greeting at the airport to visits with Council and Mayor Wheeler to a dedication and planting at the International Rose Test Garden to the largest event PBSCA has ever been involved with, the exhibition of illustrations of esteemed author Johnny Rodari's children's books held at our Portland Art Museum. This event was coordinated uh, with the effort of the Institute of Italian Culture, the internationally recognized Children's Book Fair of Bologna, uh, the Italian Consulate, the City of Portland, and the museum. Mayor Marola was very busy and duly impressed with his reception and with the palpable warmth and respect bestowed on him by our city. 2020, of course, brought a new reality. Uh, COVID-19 has forced us to adapt in ways not even imaginable a year ago. Uh, PBSCA is blessed with an expanding, incredibly talented and motivated board of directors. Their contributions and skill set, both individually and collectively, has been something to behold. We have met virtually and regularly for a year now. We have established a viable committee system that has allowed our board to hone in on areas of interest and expertise. We have reached out and helped Portland area Italian based and focused businesses. We have begun meaningful collaboration with nine other Italian organizations located in Portland. We morphed our annual fundraiser, Sagra, always a great party, into a very successful virtual event. Our community involvement is reflected in our co sponsoring with the PSU Italian program virtual events like presentations by black Italian filmmaker Fred Cujo Curornu and author and examiner of the North Africa Italian diaspora. Marinette Pendula. We are developing our, our social media presence by spreading the word uh, of our work and promoting our relations with others. Our youth exchange program, such an integral part of our mission, could not take place last summer. It is an annual reciprocal exchange allowing 10 students from each city to visit each other with homestays on alternating years. In 2020, we were to host the young people from Bologna. You're probably aware the effects of, of the pandemic were felt quite dramatically in Italy. Uh, being a densely populated country with many multi-generational households, with a passion for public life and an aging population, COVID has not been kind to Italy. The hopes for physically renewing our program uh, summer 2021 have also been dashed. This has not halted our efforts. We've established a Chiacchiara Quarantena, 
a series of virtual chats that started with former participants and has been expanded to students who are planning for this year and those who are interested in a future exchange. Through the generosity of our supporters, we have also instituted a, a BIPOC scholarship with the intent of ensuring a participation of persons of color in our program. We will also be able to provide grants and aid participants in the future. Since language is important and Italian is not offered in any Portland area high schools, we have, with the help of Portland Scuola Italiana, been able to offer basic courses to our participants. Uh, to the council, thank you for your continued support in our sister city program. I truly feel that we are essential in aiding our current recovery and in reinforcing the feeling that we are not alone in the world. Thank you. Hi, uh, Mayor and Council and distinguished uh, uh, other people that are at this meeting. My name is Rick Lamberson and I am the president of the Portland Guadalajara Sister City Association. We, uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, how things are going this year, uh, how things went last year and a little bit about what happened in 2019. Um, Port, Port, Guadalajara has been uh, Portland Sister City since 1983. And uh, it has been a very active uh, relationship. We have a great relationship now with the mayor's office down there and Enrique Ramirez is the new mayor. Um, we have a good relationship with the international um, relations group down there. We continue to establish a board of directors in the, in the city of Guadalajara. That is a direct kind of mirrored relationship like ours are with you. And, uh, this has been a very productive method for us to kind of maintain communication, to continue projects with them and to continue kind of the mission of sharing educational, cultural and, and business exchanges as we continue to do that. Go ahead and go to the next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, a little bit about the Cinco de Mayo Fiesta. Um, in 2019, we had a very successful Fiesta. Uh, success to us really means that uh, the citizens of Portland were able to share a little bit about what the, the, the culture and the music and, and the foods and the tastes of, of uh, Guadalajara here in the city of Portland. Uh, we believe we did a really good job of that. Uh, in, 20, in 2020, unfortunately, everyone is aware that we were not able to have uh, our event in that year. And uh, it uh, made us quite sad to do that. It was quite a quite a difficult thing, as you can imagine, uh, being able to plan an event of this size, where we have 80 to 120,000 people show up on a three to four day event over the weekend. Uh, we really start planning about two weeks after we uh, get out of the park and get that cleaned up and restored. As you can see, this is a lot of the fun things. On this slide, you'll actually see um, a Guinness Book of World Records that happened a few years ago wearing sombrero hats, which was which everybody really enjoyed and was a great deal of fun. And yes, we are in the Guinness. Portland is in the Guinness Book of World Records. Um, next slide, please. Thank you. Yep, and here's just some more stuff. Uh, the we look forward to being able to uh, bring more of that musical flavor, that cultural flavor, and of course the foods of Guadalajara and entertainment to Guadalajara, along with our next. Hey, Langston. Your mom's on her way over to pick you up. Um, she wants you to- Mingus, you're unmuted. Mingus, you're unmuted. <laughs> well, we need to make sure that child gets picked up for sure, so. Um, but anyway, yes. As a part of the organization, um, we have several things that we do one of the, and, and have continued to do last year and, and are doing this year. We support our bomb barrel program, really put together and, and organized and run by Jose Troncoso, a Portland firefighter who um, established with the help and financial funding of the, of the PGSCA, uh, a method by which they train firefighters in life-saving techniques in Guadalajara. And that has extended to many firefighters from around Central America and South America. Now, now, now more than that, um, Jose collects used equipment, including fire trucks that are no longer viable to be used here, but are in very good condition. And we send those down to Guadalajara to be shared with them so that they can use them. And 
And uh, we also provide things like air packs that are used and outdated here, but they get refurbished and, and get used down there greatly. And the interesting thing to me was that they actually didn't know how to use them most of the time. So our training, Jose Troncoso's training and other firemen that we send down there through the PGSCA actually train firefighters to save their own lives first and to save other people's lives through this program. It's a very good program. Now we've also continued to, um, we've continued our uh, community giving through uh, for in a couple of different ways in this year. That's okay, in a couple of way, different ways this year. Uh, one quick way is through uh, helping farm workers through Central Cultural. We sent them a, a, a very substantial amount of money this year. And we sent uh, Meals on Wheels in the city of Portland for those people that are homebound, elderly, and, and uh, unable to get out for food. So we've, we've been continuing to do our part where we think that we can. Um, next slide, please. Thank you. Our, uh, I just wanted to highlight here that we continue to, to maintain our relationships with uh, philanthropic organizations like the Royal Rosarians. We love our relationship with them. And, and the Portland Guadalajara Sister City Association was started by all Rosarians in 1983. So we honor them and thank them for their presence and their, their heartfelt help throughout the year. Uh, this is just a reminder of our community giving program. And then on the next slide, I uh, just wanted to remind you that we continue to work hard to share business education and cultural exchanges with the citizens of Portland and Guadalajara. This is an image of the, of the uh, Cinco de Mayo Fiesta from a few years ago. I hope that we can get back to this someday. But our primary motivation is, is really not to, to make money or make profits here. It is to bring the citizens of Portland together to share a cultural exchange that makes a lot of sense for, uh, that, that kind of brings the Guadalajara um, educational and musical and food experience to the citizens of Portland. And we wanna do that safely. So for that reason, unfortunately, we're not able to do the fiesta this year, but we look forward to planning and making certain that next year's event is the best ever. So with your help, we look forward to doing that. We'd love to see you all down there. Thank you. Hello, Mayor Willow, City Commissioners, and my uh, distinguished uh, sister cities associates. My name is Chi Chao Chen, President of Poland Culture and Cities, Sister City Associations. Our association was founded in November uh, 1987. Uh, we have uh, four members, four, 15 board members. Our uh, main, main focus over the years uh, would be Poland, leading the Poland Culture and Sister City delegations uh, to Lenten Festival, the Culture in February, and also hosting the uh, Culture delegation to Poland in June, those festival. We also kick off the eye docking ceremony and the Poland Dragon Ball race uh, season. Also promoting sister high, sister high schools and university between Poland and Kaohsiung along plus other uh, outreach uh, local programs. Kaohsiung has been a uh, Poland sister city for the past 33 years since 1988. It is a major international seaport and uh, the largest industrial city uh, focused in petrol chemical in Southern Taiwan. It is the third most popular uh, city in Taiwan with a population of uh, you know, 2.7 or 2.8 million. It also has uh, international exposure, such as the whole city of the 2009 War Games. They are uh, more than just an industrial city. They also have a very beautiful land, agricultural landscape. Okay. Every February, uh, uh, our Poland delegation, you know, uh, visiting the city officials, the Kaohsiung with Rose Festival Foundation and you know, Rosaria and so forth, attending their uh, annual Chinese New Year's Lenten Festival, and of course, uh, visiting you know, one of the largest schools in, in, in Taiwan through the high school campus and participate a lot of uh, their local cultural program. And we, uh, next slide. And in return, uh, uh, the uh, Kaohsiung delegation visited us in June, to, again, attending the menus, the reception, the hall, attending Grand Four Parade, 
with the uh, PKSCA, I would uh, you know float every year, and of course also visiting a lot of uh, local establishments and the and the business uh, over the years. Okay, and uh, our flagship event uh, is on the annual Poland Dragon Ball race season. For the past 30 some years, uh, averaged about 60 to 75 uh, race team participate this event, paddling up and down on the uh, down, you know, uh, downtown Willamette River. It is now a local tradition, attracts tens of thousands of spectators and become one of the iconic moments of Poland springtime. And we're also uh, hosting, you know, uh, on the average 40 to 60, you know, Kaohsiung to the high school students every year. They are, you know, well-trained, exceptional musician and dancer, you know, perform for the local audience. Uh, our host family program lasts uh, more than 30 years. Uh, you know, every time they come to here to perform, they won the uh, you know, numerous uh, Rose Festival Grand Four Parade marching band, including the highest, you know, sweepstakes award and uh, catching a lot of the hearts of the local people. They also are the uh, sister school of uh, Portland David Douglas High, High School. Okay, in 20, in, since uh, uh, 2020, due to the pandemic, uh, we uh, pretty much canceled, uh, a lot of time in the last minutes, canceled the, uh, the uh, again, the visit to Kaohsiung, the delegation visit to Kaohsiung. Yeah, uh, also we canceled uh, their visit, their delegation visit to Poland in the, uh, uh, during the road festival season. And of course, along with the Sweden High School. So all the, you know, in a nutshell, we canceled most of the program, you know, along with the, all the corporate sponsorship program. And we, you know, unfortunately also have to spend, suspend all the, you know, uh, fundraising activity that certainly has uh, some kind of financial uh, hardship uh, towards the, uh, this association. So in, uh, in react to the uh, you know, uh, financial hardship, uh, we, you know, just in the last year in 2020, we have done twice, uh, moving our you know, most important asset, our Dragon Ball fleet and all the equipment you know, for the uh, annual Dragon Ball race. We have uh, moved it twice, uh, basically chasing, or chasing the uh, donated space. Once it's been repurposed, we pretty much on the move again, just uh, for information. Uh, it is the, our key expense, uh, one of our key expense of, uh, you know, housing the, uh, you know, warehousing the, uh, the equipment and, and the boat fleas uh, becoming certainly a, a one of the key operating expense uh, we try to minimize uh, during the downtime. But yeah, uh, during the uh, uh, 2020 in July, uh, our focus uh, actively participate in the Taiwan Can Help Pandemic Relief Initiative sponsored by our, one of our key sponsors, Taipei Economic and Culture Office in Seattle, which helped donate more than 75,000, you know, made in Taiwan at that time was very much needed surgical grade mask to Poland City Bureau and a lot of agencies and including the two, uh, two uh, school districts. So it, it was uh, well received. Next slide. And the, uh, you know, uh, Kaohsiung, you know, in the 2021, Kaohsiung, uh, during the pandemic, uh, we all admitting the, uh, the you know, uh, international travel restriction, and of course, in-person visit program, still kind of, uh, uh, still kind of restricted at, at, at the moment. So they're proposing a uh, Kaohsiung Sisters and Friendly City Exposition, and then, you know, collecting a lot of, uh, kind of in the virtual format, keep uh, promoting the uh, Sister Cities relationship. You know, we are working closely with Cheeto to uh, together and the uh, promotional items, photos, uh, you know, uh, and other product in, 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 in the process to have ready essential to costume to participate in this program. And hopefully, you know, we also can uh, come with a short video of, of May Willis greetings to the costume to see the, that will be a, that will be a grace to kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, promoting long last relationship. In the last, uh, you know, I would like to to have a suggest uh, some kind of a, a, a video conference in the second half of the year between the two city halls officials to have opportunities to grade the, each other, especially after all the you know, negative uh, publicity on what happens in Poland downtown in the last years. Uh, I believe uh, they are eager and more than ready to reconnect with us. So, thank you.
Hi, everyone. Can you see me? Okay. Yes. Hi, everyone. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Shireen Farahi, and I am the Vice President of the Portland Habarovsk Russia Sister City Association, or PIXCA. I've been a PIXCA enthusiast since 2012, and it's a pleasure to be here with all of you today. So thank you, Mayor and City Council members and other honored guests. So here is an overview of our association and our activities during the past two years. First of all, our website was revamped last year to include more features, including a new blog, and we also have a Twitter account now. Next slide, please. Regarding the geography of Habarovsk, it's been a sister city for 33 years, is the regional capital of the Russian Far East, and is Russia's inland port where the Amur River borders China and connects with the Usuri River. Portland and Habarovsk are both renowned for their natural beauty and the confluence of two rivers within city limits including the Amur, which is similar in dimensions to the Columbia River. Regarding our background, just last month, the Board of Directors was treated to a presentation by Dr. Earl Molander to revisit the origins of the portland Habarovsk relationship. Next slide, please. It was fascinating to hear him describe how it evolved naturally out of national scale people-to-people -people diplomacy efforts dating back to 1983. Next slide, please. One special activity that we took part in in recent times was the exhibit that we displayed in the Portland City Hall atrium for a week in the fall of 2019. This exhibit, through photos, print media, written accounts, material items, and more, brought Pixka's mission to life for a new audience in a unique museum-like setting. Next slide, please. Fast forward to today, Pixka has adapted its operations to adhere to COVID-19 safety protocols. In contrast to our 2020 Women's Day celebration, which occurred right before a lockdown, our annual Bridge to Russia fall event was held on Zoom. Next. There was much enthusiasm for this online format because it meant that the Habarovsk side could join us in real time, as they are 17 hours ahead of Portland time, so our Saturday evening was Sunday midday for them. Next slide, please. There were musical performances and speeches from both sides, which made our 2020 Bridge to Russia event extra meaningful and memorable. Going forward, as the COVID-19 pandemic fades and daily life returns to relative normalcy, we will continue to use the Zoom format routinely to communicate with Habarovsk, which will enhance our coordination on joint efforts as we resume our normal pre-pandemic range of activities and travel. Next slide, please. Student language exchanges are a key part of PIXCA's mission and just last week, Russian language immersion students at Portland's Franklin High School and English language students at Habarovsk's Gymnasium No. 5 held a long-awaited Zoom conference where they were all thrilled to show off their language skills for each other. Other PIXCA Zoom conferences are in the works, and at our next board meeting, we'll be discussing activity options for our annual Victory Day commemoration, which honors the Soviet victory in 1945 over Hitler's invading Nazi forces. Next slide, please. This past year has been a challenge, but for Pixka, the road ahead is clear and the future is bright. We look forward to continuing our mission of fostering international friendship and understanding, which we've been proudly carrying out since 1988. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mayor, and good afternoon, Commissioners. And it is a good afternoon. The sun is shining. I can see it out my windows. Yes. My name's Karin Hansen and I'm a board member of the Portland Mutari Sister City Association. The Portland Mutari Sister City Association is a humanitarian organization that is our only sister city on the continent of Africa. We were established in 1991. It's, it began with the protests of apartheid, continued through the peak of the HIV AIDS pandemic that devastated particularly the rural communities of Africa, and has continued to help out small local organizations in Greater Mutari that benefit and strengthen the lives of women and children. Since we were last together here at Council updating you on the efforts of Portland sister Portland's sister cities, as you well know, across the globe, we have all experienced great, a great deal of upheaval and uncertainty. During this time, our organization has struggled. We, the PMSCA, have not held any fundraising efforts, yet we have, we have still found ways to impact positively the lives of our friends in Mutari with as much support as we've been able to muster. 
In the last few days, I did a little peek into the current events of Zimbabwe, and I found that there is some good news. This last month, China has donated 200,000 doses of vaccine against the coronavirus, and the Zimbabwean government purchased another 144,000. Just yesterday, the Zimbabwean president publicly received his vaccine in order to encourage more people to join in. Here in Portland, our traditional date to bring together people and raise funds has been World AIDS Day, which falls on every December 1st. We decided this most recent December to take this day and use it as an opportunity to virtually bring together our old local and a couple not so local friends and take some time to reminisce and reconnect. We also took time to remember several beloved contributors who have left this world in the last few years. During this virtual gathering, we learned that a local Zimbabwean friend was working on a water project in her hometown and needed some assistance and guidance. We helped shepherd the beginning efforts of that project. We are in current negotiation with our partners in Mutari regarding a donation that will help them through this pandemic. The donation will cover costs of such things as basic medical supplies, PPE, school fees for children, and money for supplies for some micro businesses. So there you have it. It isn't a whole lot, but it is something that makes a difference. And in this time in our history where everything feels a little out of whack and nothing is normal or simple, it feels good to know in small ways we've been able to do something that matters and is good for others. Thank you very much. Honorable, <clears throat> Hi. Honorable Mayor Wheeler and Commissioners, my name is Mami Kikuchi, and as the president of the Portland Support Sister City Association, I am honored to report our activities for the last two years. In 2019, we celebrated our 60th anniversary. Portland and Sapporo have one of the longest standing sister city relationships in the U.S., beginning in 1959 and continuing with regular, plentiful, and meaningful exchanges. In June 2019, we welcomed a large delegation from Sapporo, consisting of Mayor Akimoto, city assembly members, business leaders, and citizens. They enjoyed watching the Rose Festival Parade as Mayor Akimoto joined it. Citizens from both cities had a great time together. With Oregon Convention Center and Portland Japanese Garden, PSSCA co-hosted the Peace Bell Rededication Ceremony. The bell was a gift from Sapporo commemorating our 30th anniversary. In October, a delegation including Mayor Wheeler and representatives from the Portland Japanese Garden, Prosper Portland, Travel Portland, Royal Rosarians, and other communities visited Sapporo. People tried wearing kimono and attend, attending a tea ceremony. Also visited cultural, educational, and business sites, such as the Disaster Prevention Center and the Aini Museum. During the pandemic, most of our regular activities have been canceled. However, we are still going strong. Our board members quickly learned how to use Zoom for our monthly meetings and events. Sapporo International Communication Plaza and PSSCA started co-hosting a series of online language exchange programs for high school students. Our quarterly social gatherings are also hosted online. Also, we successfully completed a makeover of our website, reviewed bylaws, and just, re, uh, just started our new bilingual newsletter. Another achievement during the pandemic is that Diary Translation Project. The diary was written by a first-generation Japanese immigrant in Hood River in, right after World War II. By many volunteers in Sapporo and Portland, it was translated into modern Japanese and English. This unique record will soon be available to the public. To conclude my presentation, I'd like to recognize the incredible effort of my fellow board members and our partners in Sapporo. We stay positive, keep making progresses in, in this hard time. The relationship thrives because of the talent, hard work, and dedication of many. Thank you.
Good afternoon, Mayor Wheeler and City Commissioners. My name is Bruce Wu, and I am the president of the PSACA, Portland Suzhou Sister City Association. Today, it's my honor to briefly introduce our sister city, Suzhou, and the Portland Suzhou Sister City Association, our missions, and what we have been doing during the past couple of years. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, Suzhou has been our sister city for 33 years. Suzhou is uh, famous with its long history, which was founded in uh, 514 before century. As you can see from the photos, Suzhou, like Portland, is a really beautiful city. It is called Venice of China. Suzhou is located near to Shanghai with 30 minutes um, by bullet train from Shanghai. And the city is also famous with its gardens. Um, the city has nine classic gardens designated as UNESCO and World Heritage. Suzhou is the eighth most popul population cities uh, in China, has 10 to 30 million populations uh, in 2020. Ne next slide, please. Uh, Portland and Suzhou has a long history of friendship. In 2013, Portland earned the Best Sister City Award from China by being a bridge city, providing a bridge of friendship between um, our two cities. The painting you see was created by third grade of Woodstock Elementary School in 2019, which show Portland Suzhou Bridge mural. As a bridge of communication between Portland and Suzhou, um, our mission, um, our association was founded in 1988 with missions of promoting education, culture, and economy communications between the people of two cities. Next slide, please. Um, during the past years, we helped six local elementary, middle, and high schools, including Woodstock Elementary School, Hosford Middle School, and the Lincoln High School, established the sister city um, relationship with six uh, school in Suzhou. In 2019, more than 100 students uh, visit their sister schools in Suzhou for a week or so to communicate with their um, little friends, living with their families, and to learn US and share Chinese cultures with their friends uh, in Portland. As you can see from the photos in 2019, um, you know, um, there's students like um, middle school, high school, and the elementary school students visit the local schools. Next slide, please. Uh, for the cultural exchange, in July 2018, we assisted in organizing the best of 50 entries from poster design competition being exhibited in the Portland City Hall. Um, next slide, please. In 2019, we also helped to organize cultural exchange delegation of Suzhou Chinese Orchestra visiting Portland. More than 60 players visited Suzhou and uh, performed Chinese orchestra in Portland. Next slide, please. Each year, we organized gala or network um, appreciation evening at the Lancel Garden with honors having Mayor Wheeler, representatives from the city of Portland, representatives from Suzhou and our sponsors, partners, and friends to reunion together for communicating and networking. We also announced our um, sponsorship to our international students in PSU each year during our annual event. As you can see, um, the left corner, the photo, uh, it's the, the students was selected in 2019 to be sponsored by um, the PSSCA. Also, um, the right corner of the photo, you can see the painting, which was created by the Wood Elementary School. It's really huge. Uh, next slide, please. Um, the PSCA also worked work, work closely with local communities uh, to fight with COVID-19 pandemic. We assisted the city of Portland in successfully receive 20,000 face masks donated from Nanjing in July 2019. We also worked closely with our um, partner Confucius Institute at PSU, donated hundreds of face masks to local hospitals including OHSU in 2020. And uh, next slide, please. This year, because of the pandemic, we have to cancel our annual event in the first half um, of the year. Instead, we are planning to organize more virtual events, such as virtual student exchange 
um, events and the business communication events. We really appreciate the continued great support from the city, from Mayor Wheeler, from Ms. Chido Derwell, and our friends in Poland and Suzhou. Thank you. Hello, and thank you for the opportunity to share with you today about Portland's relationship with our South Korean sister city, Ulsan. My name is Catherine Morrow, and I'm the secretary of the Portland Ulsan Sister City Association. I'll share a brief background, then talk about our activities last year, then about those planned for this year and next year. This map here shows Ulsan's location on Korea's southeast coast about a 45 minute drive north of Busan and a one hour flight or two and a half hour bullet train ride from Seoul. The Portland Ulsan sister city relationship goes back about 40, 35 year, 34 years, excuse me. The photo here shows a panorama of the Ulsan metropolitan city's central core with the Tewa River running through the city. The sister city relationship grew out of a relationship started back in 1985 or 86 between the Port of Ulsan and the Port of Portland, when at the time Ulsan was seeking a U.S. West Coast port to receive imported Hyundai cars. Hyundai cars still today come through the Port of Portland, which receives the largest volume of Hyundai cars on the West Coast. Ulsan Metropolitan City is very similar to the greater Portland metro area in terms of both population and geographical land size. And both cities have large rivers running through their centers. Once classified as a highly polluted dead river, Ulsan's Tewa River has now been fully restored and ecologically recovered. During the 1990s, Ulsan city officials quietly studied Portland and in the early 2000s, built three major parks modeled after our iconic parks in Portland, a rose garden, a riverfront park, and Olson's Grand Park modeled after our Washington Park and Forest Park. Olson is considered the industrial powerhouse of Korea with its key industries being auto manufacturing, shipbuilding, petrochemical industries, and lithium ion battery manufacturing. Ulsan is the wealthiest city in Korea with an annual export valued at 60 billion US dollars and a per capita GDP of about $55,000 US dollars. Ulsan boasts the largest rose garden in Korea and like Portland, they hold an annual rose garden festival with theirs occurring in May. Next slide, please. They also have a large rose bed within their garden named in honor of Portland. Over the years, cultural exchanges have included joint participation in one another's rose festivals, exchanges between our two parks programs, Olson symphony and choir concerts performed in Portland and Olson youth and college study trips to Portland. In 2019, delegation exchanges occurred during um, our respective roast festivals. Since though the COVID pandemic has hit in 2020, our sister city activities have decreased. Last summer, as a gesture of both friendship and support for COVID relief, Olson Metropolitan City sent a PPE donation of 300 protective body suits to Portland, which our association presented to the City of Portland's COVID Response Coordinating Committee. Next slide. Additionally, Ulsan shared their city's report about their city's efforts undertaken um, in response to the COVID pandemic hitting their city. Next slide. Focal areas for our association this year include building on virtual communications and virtual collaborations with Ulsan, exploring new ways to virtually participate in one another's cultural festivals, looking at and exploring further business connections to be had, and information exchange related to economic development and city resilience. We'll also be planning for our 35th anniversary, which will take place next year in 2022. 
especially with an eye on, on the possibility of in-person exchanges. We aim also to strengthen our role of promoting a greater understanding and appreciation of US-Korean and international relations. That is key to the heart of our association and our friendship with Ulsan. Thank you very much. Thank you. And Cheeto, does that complete the presentations for our sister city associations? Yes, Mayor, that is correct. Very good. And is there more to your presentation or can we open this up for council discussion? You are more than free to add comments. Thank you so much for your time. Great. Colleagues, I, I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. I missed this last year. And uh, I, I just got to say, it's great to see all of our incredible sister city volunteers and the passion you bring to this and the importance of the relationships from a, a cultural and educational and uh, even an economic perspective. And what, what, a, what a great, what a great round the world trip you just took us on. Thank you. I'll, I'll have some comments at the end, but I want to open this up for my colleagues. Commissioner Hardesty, you're up first, followed by Commissioner Maps. <clears throat> Um, thank you, Mayor, and thank you to everyone. Um, I uh, was privileged my first year on the council for us to actually be in person. Um, and the one time in my entire life, I was jealous that I was not mayor. You may remember I uh, decided that I was going to pack my bags and I was going to start traveling with you because why does the mayor get this honor and the rest of us don't? So. Um, the hardest thing about COVID for me has been not being able to travel, not being able to immerse myself in other cultures and ways that feed my soul. Um, and so you have today taken me on this uh, ride, uh, this travel adventure that I have been missing to my core. Um, and uh, I want you to believe this, uh, when we are able to safely travel again, any place in the world we want to go, um, I promise you I will win the uh, battle with the mayor uh, for my pick of where I go. Uh, and I look forward to the opportunity to um, continue to learn so much about other cultures. And I wanted, I would be remiss if I didn't also apologize for the hate that many of you are reading about in the media, um, just the uh, anti-Asian rhetoric uh, that unfortunately um, is part of our society. Uh, but I wanna be very clear uh, that we embrace every single individual from every culture, from any, every community, and you are always welcome in Portland as long as I am on the city council and um, I just can't wait to be able to travel again. But I did not want to miss this opportunity to say that what you're reading about, what you're hearing, that is not who we are. Uh, and that is never, ever, ever going to be acceptable in a city uh, like Portland. So thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to do a little travel today. And uh, thank you for once again sharing your culture and your love of people uh, with us here in the city of Portland. Thank you, Commissioner Hardesty. Commissioner Maps. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I wanna thank our panelists for that really uh, a wonderful presentation. I'm really delighted to have this opportunity to connect with Portland's sister cities. Um, lately, I've been thinking about our sister cities a lot. You know, um, the COVID crisis reminds me that we live on a small and delicate planet. The first COVID death occurred just in January 2020. Within 100 days, that plague spread around the world. And a little more than a year after that, more than 2.5 million people all across the planet had died from that disease. That's a reminder that the fate of every human being on this planet is intimately intertwined with the fate of every other human being on this planet. And that's also why I love the Sister City program. It's a celebration of the ties that bind us together. 
Um, now, uh, in anticipation of our celebration of our sister city uh, our relationship, I did some Googling today to check out some of the issues um, our colleagues on our other city councils have been dealing with, especially in our sister cities. And in those stories, I recognize Portland stories. What do uh, Port what does Portland and her city, our sister city, share in common? Well, great cities are battlegrounds of democracy and the front lines for the struggle for equality. For example, this week, our friends in Sapporo, Japan, are celebrating a landmark court decision that ruled it unconstitutional to ban same-sex couples from marrying. And I want our friends in Sapporo to know that Portland celebrates with you. And in recent months, our sister city in Russia, Kaborovsk, has been racked with political protest. That should sound familiar to Portlanders too. And another thing that Portland and her sister cities share in common, great cities are engines of innovation. For example, this week, our counterparts in Ulsan, South Korea, are testing out unmanned hydrogen fuel cell powered um, autonomous forklifts small enough to fit into uh, warehouses. These are basically uh, robot forklifts that run on clean energy. Um, and this week, I'm thinking about our friends in uh, Mutare, uh, Zimbabwe. Um, as some of you know, I'm the commissioner in charge of Portland's Water Bureau, and I'm thinking about our colleagues on the Mutare City Council, who right now are considering building a new $30 million water treatment plant. That is very much my life, too. Um, and cities are also a place where we come together to celebrate our history and our diversity and where we create new culture. For example, recently in Ascalon, um, Israel, archaeologists discovered a 2,000-year-old factory that made fermented fish sauce. And uh, in recent days, our friends in Suzhou, China, have been exploring the history of Islam in their city, a history that stretches back at least 800 years. And um, at least according to the media, in recent days, in our sister city, Kaohsiung, Taiwan, salmon chaos has become a problem. Uh, and here's the story here. A popular restaurant chain is offering free sushi to anyone who changes their last name to sushi. Um, and an overwhelming number of people uh, uh, have been doing that. Um, I take this as a reminder that Portland is not the only city on the planet that keeps it weird. And finally, cities are a place where we come together to share our collective joy. And if you want to see a great example of collective joy, check out uh, soccer's Olympic qualifying tournaments, which are being hosted by our sister city in Guadalajara. Our friends in Guadalajara appear to be over the moon to be uh, hosting the Olympic soccer qualifiers in their city. Congratulations, uh, Guadalajara. Portland celebrates with you. And I'd like to close by sharing a quick report on Portland with our sister cities. Friends, I'll tell you, um, 2020 was one of the most challenging years in our city's 170 year long history. More than 2000 Oregonians lost their lives due to COVID. The disease devastated our economy and exposed weaknesses in our city's social safety net. But I believe with the turn of the new year, uh, Portland has turned a corner. Portlanders are getting vaccinated. Our schools and businesses are opening up. Portland continues to be an innovation hub. Uh, for example, here is an Oregon story, which I suspect you might not have heard. During the COVID epidemic, Oregonians created more new businesses than at any time in our state's history. That's a clear signal that Oregonians use the COVID crisis to innovate, to create new kinds of businesses which respond to the new world we live in now. That's also a sign that Portland is at the dawn of the most innovative moment in our, sister, in our city's history, and Portland's best days lie ahead. Um, finally, I want to remind our friends around the world that Portland is open for business. Once you get vaccinated, this is a great time to visit the City of Roses. 
we are still the Portland you love. And we have some amazing deals on flights, hotel rooms, and convention packages. Please come visit us soon. We look forward to welcoming you back. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Commissioner Sushi. That was well done. Next Excellent. is Commissioner Ryan. Yes, um, good afternoon and, and thank you, Mayor. And uh, geez, following uh, Commissioner Maps. Uh, <laughs> no slide. pressure, no pressure. I, I, I suck at that, yeah. Um, let me just uh, start off by saying there are a few meetings where it's, you're just reminded how much you miss being in live settings. And this was definitely one of them, maybe at the top of the list for me right now. And yet, like the mayor, it was wonderful to do this virtual tour but I just look so forward to um, building relationships with all of you. And thank you um, for the, I especially love the, the artwork that you showed with the children and the students from the different countries. Um, I'm just gonna do a few top of mind reflections I have. One is um, I remember in 1972, yes, I was alive. I was a little kid in um, elementary school, but I remember watching the Olympics and remembering that um, Sapporo is a sister city of Portland. And that made me, feel special. Um, the one that really uh, is big in my heart is the sister city relationship with um, Mutari, Mutari Zimbabwe. And that's because, um, Karen, you might know this, but my dear friend, um, Maria Cosmetados um, was instrumental in building that relationship. And so I went to several fundraisers um, on World AIDS Day and it just brought the world together that we were helping build a day center, HIV clinic um, with all of you in your country. And as someone that's lived with HIV myself since the early eighties, that means a lot to me. So I just am really grateful, Karin, that you've kept that, um, you and the volunteers have kept that sister city relationship active. And I look forward to being helpful in terms of um, that. The third um, really is around Rose Festival um, because I uh, was given the assignment as a commissioner overseeing the Rose Festival. I uh, checked in with Jeff Curtis this morning and he just wrote back, um, well, depending on the year, this is quotes, a vast majority of our sister cities have some type of deep integration in our events and programming for the Rose Festival. With the highlight being the special signing ceremony that is hosted by the mayor, that takes place during the festival. So um, I guarantee you when we open up the Rose Festival in 2022 again, um, it'll, be, it'll be different and, um, and hopefully it'll be deeper and more global and more neighborhood focused as well. Because the fact is we have so many people in our neighborhoods that are a part of your countries as well. And so I look forward to being a part of knitting that together with all of you. Thank you so much. It was a a delightful way to spend time by listening to all of you. Thanks. Thank you, Commissioner Ryan. Commissioner Rubio. Hi, I, I just wanna thank each one of you so much for this presentation and the reminder about how important a role that you all play in ensuring that we establish, maintain, and that we strengthen our relationships with all our sister cities. And as we can see, it's, it matters in a whole new way now even more than um, we even realized it would um, given this global pandemic and through our changes in national leadership where so much is at stake for all of our global communities right now. Um, I also had the great fortune to attend um, the with along with the uh, Guadalajara Sister City delegation visit to Guadalajara under Mayor Potter um, with Karen and, and um, other folks. Um, during my time as a, as a staffer in, in City Hall. And I have such amazing memories of that time and of the warmth and the friendship and the learning that occurred in those visits and those connections back and forth. Um, and along with making me a lifelong tequila fanatic, um, it also left, you know, created an impression that impacted my life and taught me about the importance of understanding that we hold what but one place in the world, but we are all interdependent and we are all connected. Um, and that spirit is what came through to me today um, through your presentation. So thank you for this report and for your deep commitment to lifting up our connection to, the, to these sister cities 
And I look forward uh, to a future in the near term, like my colleagues have all said, where we can celebrate and learn about these things together um, and in person. Thanks. Thank you, Commissioner Rubio. And uh, Commissioner Maps, I'm gonna take up that offer. I'm gonna change my name to Mayor Sushi as well. I like the idea of free sushi. That sounds like a good plan. Uh, I wanna thank all of you again. And uh, just to reiterate what I said up front, uh, Cheeto, thank you for your leadership and the work you do around international relations. You are a one woman shop and you do what other cities do with an entire staff. And uh, I, I wanna thank you. You've stepped up at every occasion and you've been very supportive and helpful of this effort. And I also wanna thank again, all of our volunteers who are working with our various sister city associations. Again, this isn't, um, this isn't frivolous. This is about making deep connections with other communities, sharing ideas, sharing opportunities amongst our youth, uh, educational opportunities and exchange programs. Uh, every one of these uh, relationships includes important uh, foundational business relationships and business development opportunities. And the goal is always to create mutually beneficial economic opportunities. But from my perspective, the most important element here is really cultural. And Commissioner Maps, you really stole the show when you pointed out that while the issues may not be exactly the same, uh, the pressures are certainly the same. And the experiences are uh, really experiences of commonality. And that's, that's what I have learned in my visits to the two sister cities that I've actually had the opportunity to go and travel to is, man, we really are all in the same boat in so many different ways. And it's fun to make those connections and those lasting connections, not just personally, but really on behalf of, of our city and our, our respective sister cities. And yes, I absolutely look forward to uh, participating again soon. I'd hope to actually uh, have the opportunity to visit at least one of our sister cities this summer. I don't know if that will happen, we'll see. Um, but uh, I, I'd like to be able to make that happen. And, and colleagues, I, I don't wanna be uh, in any way exclusive about this. I, I think there's plenty of work for all of us to do to strengthen these relationships with our sister cities. Uh, and, and travel, frankly, is only a small part of it. A lot of the work that, that takes place uh, with our sister city associations takes place right here in the city of Cork. And there are many events, there are many opportunities to collaborate, many opportunities to work with our sister city associations. And, and I wanna encourage all of you to, to actively participate uh, in those efforts. So uh, thank you for that. And uh, thank you all for participating again. Thank you all for frankly, uh, ending our last council session of the week on a very positive and uplifting note. I actually feel better right now than I think I've felt in the last month just listening to you and the enthusiasm. And uh, I look forward to, to continuing the conversation. With, with that colleagues, unless there's anything else, I will entertain a motion to accept the report. So moved. I'll accept the second. Second. Commissioner Hardesty moves the report. Commissioner Mapp second the report. Any further discussion? Helen, call the roll. Rubio. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Hardesty. Aye. Maps. Aye. Wheeler. I just really don't want this one to end. So, <laughs> but, but I will, I know people are busy. I vote aye. The report is accepted. Thank you all for your exceptional work. We appreciate it on behalf of everybody in this committee. Well done. Hey, thank you, Maeve. Keelan, I believe that completes our agenda for today. Is that correct? That's correct, Mayor. All right. Thank you as well. We are adjourned. Shalom, shalom.